This is Space Cats Peace Turtles, the unofficial podcast for Fantasy Flight's Twilight Imperium. Episode 79, Tournament Wrap-Up. Music by Ben Prunty, featuring Matt Martins and Hunter Donaldson. Guys, I played a whole game of Twilight Imperium today. Yeah, let's now hear. Now make let's, me. No, let's go ahead and hear about your dumb game. No, first. it's not dumb. Let's, I played. Let's lead I off played. Your dumb game. Can I? Can I? First off, I played as Jada Pake's fashion. Faction. Uh, the, fashion. The savages of his senior. fashion. I played with Jada Pake's fashion. Do you wear uh, his jeans or just his t-shirt? I wore. Mm-hmm. He wears Belvedere's. Uh, I don't even know what that word is. <laughs> I just said it. <laughs> Wait, what anyway, did you say? I said Belvedere. <laughs> What is that? <laughs> what is a velvet? What do you mean stru- by that? It's a piece of structure. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Let's get it. Stop it. Leave me alone. Uh, oh, it's I like played- those. It's like those windows. Yeah. That, yeah. Those sure. arches. And that's what I wore. Hey, I played as the savages of Semia today in a game. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna get posted to YouTube. It's on our Twitch. It's gonna be in a lot of components. We had some weird issues. We're trying to work out with our. We tried to do a um, secret conversation room today. Mm-hmm. And the camera we were trying to do it on was glitching out really bad in uh, ways that, like, I don't even understand. And I haven't been able to figure out what's wrong with it. So, well, anyways. I want to say what was cool about that, though. It, it, you had a green screen set up, and it was, it was gonna very be cool. like it was you awesome were if it in, worked. in space art. In outer space. It would have been awesome if it worked the whole time, and yeah. it didn't. So, that's well. that's something to figure out. It's okay, though. Um, but, no, I played as the Savages. I, I think it would be cool to do... So, Jada Pake is planning to release those here pretty soon, actually. Uh, last he said was May 1st. I'm not going to hold him to that. I have no idea if they're going to release next week or not. Um, but he was planning on, like, officially releasing them. Um, kind of like, you know, what is once he's finished this beta testing. He's, he's sent it out to a bunch of people. People have been trying it and sending him notes. Um, but I think they're pretty tight uh, mm-hmm. as far as, like, design... They're, they're not great. They're not a good faction, and that was by design. He didn't want to make this overpowered faction, and I think that's how people should approach uh, making factions, is don't just make a faction that you think is awesome. That's kind right. of... Anyways, uh, but they're cool. They, they manipulate the discard pile of action cards, and the one ability I didn't really use and was a big mistake to, but also it costs command counters, and I didn't... No, it costs it cost two action cards to basically signal jam someone. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, for them at any time, and there was one moment where I really should have done it and forgot it was an ability because you know I'm just it's the first time I've ever played this faction that we haven't ever talked about or done anything with, and I'm pretty bad about that anyways. I just like forget to do certain abilities when I'm playing with a faction. I kind of play every faction every faction as though it's a vanilla faction, mm-hmm. and then like halfway through the game, remember like oh there's specific abilities I need to be leaning into more. Sure. Um. So at one point, Arborek <laughs> Arborek got War Suns round two in this game, and then in round four. He moved adjacent to my home system and then built a War Sun. And I could have locked him off from ever even moving into that system and didn't. It. So I would love to play them again. They're good. I'm glad I have them. I have like a physical copy of them. I'll definitely play them again. If, in my mind, I have 18 factions now. So I can deal three factions to six people. Mm. That's cool. And I'm just, That's nice. I just, I'm just counting them as a faction. If Jada Pake releases updates, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to get a, a new print off of him. But I don't think he needs to adjust them at all. And... Uh, that's that's me publicly saying, Jada. I think your faction's great, and you should you should move forward with it. Can I say um, what yeah. the other hook of the faction is? Just so, just yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. It, it's I think more more the obvious like lead hook is that their infantry uh, are not a yeah. two for one. You don't get two infantry for yeah. one resource. You only get one for one. But their infantry hit like a truck. They hit yeah. for five. And I I did try to lean into that a little bit there. I had one instance where I was doing. I was invading someone else's planet, and it was a one v one, and you can kind of lean into that, which I did. I said, you know what, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two. I had two infantry and two planets I can invade, each with one infantry on it, and it was like, well, the normal safe thing to do would be send two against one and just forget about the other. But I was like, you know what, let's see what these savages can do. Let's do two separate one v ones, and I won both of them. Wow. So, did, did you ever get a chance to build that flagship? No, I didn't. It would have been cool too. I just never had. I was. I had a horrible pie slice. I never had enough money. the The flagship um, gives their ground forces in that system sustained damage. So Ooh. then they then they're like full on mechanized units from TI three. If you know anything about TI three mechanized units, hit on a five. If you upgrade them, they hit on a four. 
if you upgrade them, they cannot be shot at with PDS defense. So when they're invading a planet, you can't shoot at them with PDS. That's Dang. pretty cr awesome. But they don't have the reroll ability, so they don't they don't revive and go back to your home, which is even more difficult because there's just no like you get ground forces really slow. So I tried to lean into it really hard of like every time I built my home system, I built at least one ground force because yeah, otherwise there's there's no way to quickly get more. So it was like you need to just all, you need to be steady with it and always be producing them. So I tried to do that. I did okay. I ended tied for a second or whatever. It was a weird game anyways. No one dealt with a sorrow and a sorrow just ran away with it. That was EJ. So weird game, but I, I felt good about them as a faction in the network of factions. I think they fit in great and uh, I I think everyone should could consider them the 18th faction of TI. Yeah, so. that sounds great. Right. Uh, and congrats to EJ for finally locking it up, you know. Finally winning a game. <laughs> finally winning a game. That guy. <laughs> he gets close every time. Never really locked it up before. Um, what? what are we, what are are we, we talking about? about? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Wow, we were on the same exact page. We're in synchronicity. Well, well, uh, my, let's let my question be the one that landed, and then you answer me. Even though we no, both, I think we, we both, both asked know. it. We both asked it, which means Alec has to answer the question. Oh, okay, yes, Alec. Because Alec is here, and we haven't even introduced. Oh, yeah, him. that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I've just been sitting here giggling a bit. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I'm. I'm here. I'm present and accounted for. And today we're going to talk about the tournament as a whole, uh, yeah. our thoughts and feelings about it, and our thoughts and feelings about tournaments going forward. In general, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's a, that's a fair assessment. So let's, let's dig in first. So for the very first, we're not going to talk about like specific games. We have done plenty of that over the past three months, like yeah. digging into specific games. Yeah. So a lot of this is going to be very general. But more importantly, I think what we're going to talk about is how we feel about tournaments now that we've done a very big one um and and where we think the place of tournaments um stand in mm -hmm. the community um but so first thing let's let's just get some stuff out of the way what were your guys's biggest surprises from the tournament just like just beha player yeah. behavior or things like that what, what are your guys's biggest takeaways of surprising things you didn't expect so i was i was super vocal right at the very start uh that i i didn't think the speaker token would get sold a lot. And I don't know how common this is in people's like own little friendly metas or whatever, but uh -huh. on, on Tabletop Simulator, at least, uh, the speaker token gets sold to the player to your left a lot. To your right? Like, yes, sorry. Wow. Yeah. I play okay. TI a lot, guys, I promise. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it happens like a lot until for the first, you know, four rounds until it starts yeah. really matter. It becomes very important. Yeah. Uh, and I, I thought that the competitive nature of the tournament and the fact that you can't like part of that deal is always uh that the person who played the politics and gave the speaker token away would still get default you first to, pick. to get yeah. first pick and like yeah. that's not there's no way to make that a binding deal and i just i thought that no one would risk that and i yeah. thought that if that and, happened and it would get broken and that just never happened right Right. Yeah, well, it's funny to me too because I have that same mentality of even if I do the deal, like I'll try to buy speaker token, but I never make a promise that I'll give them first pick. It just doesn't even seem worth it to do that. Like, mm -hmm. I just I if we're gonna talk about strategy cards, let's talk about when strategy cards are getting picked. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna like leave myself open to feeling like you've I've backstabbed you or whatever. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. That happened a like a lot, a lot. Sometimes yeah. I feel like there were a number of instances where there weren't there wasn't even anything just like traded it was just like sure i'll give it to you as long as you still give me first pick which is like yeah, so why are you even giving it to yeah, him i don't that, get it like right um but yeah it did it it happened a lot yeah it's a um, weird deal because you you it's non-binding and you're giving away leverage basically that yeah. you have on other players um, right I, I think it's what's it's not so surprising that it was happening a lot because I think it's very I feel like it's very common in TTS culture although I might be just yeah. saying pulling that no, out you're my right. butt. No, no, you're totally right. Yeah. So, but what I what I was surprised is that people did not um, use that leverage too often. Most of the time, these uh, yeah. these speaker token deals uh, they stayed pretty solid outside of a few yeah. instances that we kind of you know sang about oh, every single right. time it happened well like just like schroeder schroeder was like the main person in the tournament right who and he didn't who, even break it he just like no he didn't break it but he exactly he would come in and go well we need to retalk about this which is like why did you even say it in the first place that you would do? like that that's kind of my point is like why even say you're gonna give them first pick like yeah. it doesn't well for i mean for schroeder what i would say is that he went from being last pick to having the speaker token and then from then on has all the leverage as far as this ongoing right. nebulous deal you know for him right. it's great play for that, whoever I, I sold it to him it's like well i don't know 
Yeah, that's the problem. Is if if you're selling it, you need to get something actually out of it, and not yeah. just like let someone have it. And, and that, the other thing to weird. consider is the agenda phase. The speaker yeah. token has the speaker has a lot of power in the yeah, agenda phase for sure. Uh, not just breaking ties, but also voting last is yep. a huge thing because you you're more likely to be able to sell your votes or buy the votes that you need uh, to get an agenda to, get, to go your way. And also, there are certain agendas where voting first is terrible and voting yeah. last is best like mutiny yeah. and uh the action card one whatever that's called um you, you if you're first you just can't vote on those yeah. right yeah well uh my most surprising thing was that I- i'm i'm surprised but also it does make sense it's not like i think it's crazy or bad that people did this but people played a lot safer than i expected they would I thought kind of that the tournament setting would lead people to I got to I got to risk it and really try to pull off this victory and it's being recorded so like you know I thought people would would want that that pride of pulling off a big maneuver mm-hmm. yeah. and almost every time we saw people not push for a victory point when it would leave them in a dangerous position yep. and they would rather not score the points and hope that they're in a good position next round to still be able to win. Yeah. I mean, almost every single game that happened where people <laughs> yep. would we thought they could win one round, they didn't they didn't yeah. even push for it. They didn't even try. They they took the safest path possible every time. And it does I mean it does make sense and it works and it's fine. I just was really expecting people to to be kind of a little bit more cutthroat and a little bit more risky. Yeah, uh, because uh, you know, there's a tournament on the line. So, but I, I guess tournament on the line means I'm not going to give up any positional advantages that I already have in favor of maybe score, like maybe winning this round. I would rather have a definite approach next round. Or right. Whatever. If it's if it's like a tortoise and the hare situation, I think the overall feeling of the community was much more tortoise yeah, than it was for sure. Let's play Which steady and slow. Basically. Ironic, given how uh, the extra performed uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh that was that was intentional <laughs> i i also yeah. feel like a part of that overall if we're talking about the entire tournament uh i feel like what might be influencing that uh perception we have of the community is that prelims map um yeah because we got you know eight, what 18 games in right off the bat that was on a on a map that was definitely set up for that type of I think it's definitely sure. smarter to play on the prelims map uh, safe and slow because yep. you got most of the things necessary to accomplish a lot of objectives just in your slice. So if you're yeah. swinging, you might ruin your slice, which is the be- the worst thing you could do on that map, basically. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, and, and that's that's an interesting point. And I, we're going to talk more about like the maps in general here in a, in a bit. But I do think it's interesting to talk about how, I mean... 18 out of 25 of these games were on one map and so it's hard to talk about the tournament at large versus just the prelims because most of the tournament is the prelims Mm -hmm. the the semis and the finals almost are this completely separate entity that are just seven games that were just like this other thing that happened Mm -hmm. um so i think yeah when we talk about the prelims we certainly reinforce the idea of playing safely right um and and the it seemed like a lot of players had an issue shifting into the semis where the semis map was a very yeah. mean map. I mean, a lot of people just straight up didn't like the semis map. They think it's yeah. a bad map yeah. and yeah. I, that's fine. I don't, I just, I don't care. It, it is what it is. Um, but I, I do think part of that is because we, at, all the players in the community sat there and thought about that prelims map for like two months and then completely changed you know, direction of how, how they were supposed to, to do things. I think any shift was going to be kind of, yes. Eh. Um, yeah. But like the fact that it is the, of all the maps that, that came out of the tournament, that is the most cutthroat one is the semis. Um, yeah. I think just, and you know what, whatever I think, I think like, well, because that, the, the other thing too, is like that round is the one where you have a safety net anyways. So for right. me, it's like, I don't yeah. care that it's like this horribly cutthroat. Th- there's other arguments of like, that that what is it Ar- Arby's is a weaker slice which I still I, it's weird to me that Arby's is considered so much worse than all the other slices I don't know maybe I'm not as analytical as other people but I don't see why Arby's is that much worse but regardless I don't want to get too much into just like the specifics of each map right but the fact that I, I don't know I just think that map you had to 
that was the map I really wanted to encourage you to like go for broke. And if and because because if you if you go for broke and win, you get to go to the finals. And if you don't, it's okay. You're gonna just go to the knockout. It's not a big deal. What's yeah. everybody? So I, uh, just to take a quick poll of the three of us, what's everybody's favorite map that that we did? The um, finals for me. I I yeah. put a, I just put so much thought and energy into that finals map. It's the first idea I had for any of these maps. Mm -hmm. It's the idea I was most committed to making work and it's my favorite it, it's a map that encourages my favorite kind of game yeah which is some players are trying to do this some players are trying to do this other thing like there's different competing approaches to the game and that's what i want to see um, I, so that's, I, I like that's that map by far my favorite yep i think um, that i think the finals map is the best map for our purposes of like yeah let's have a competitive whatever like you know it's it's the most tournament feeling map I feel yeah. like of all of them, but I really liked uh, the prelims map as I a think casual it, game map. Yep, basically. I think the prelims map has the most lasting appeal. Yeah, and absolutely. and certainly that was by design as well too, right? I mean the, the idea that that prelims map we already knew it was going to get played by eighteen different games with players who hadn't been vetted through yeah. the tournament yet. Like we knew that that was the more casual map. And if anything, too, it, it is to our advantage. We went into this tournament knowing, like, this is just a great opportunity to collect some stats. We're going to talk about stats here in a little bit. But but just in general, we, we knew that this was a good opportunity to collect stats. And a map that would continue to get played by many people seemed yep. like the best I, one to try to get 108 people to play. Sure. Yeah, that, that was I, certainly I still, intentional. I still see people playing that map on, on Discord. Yep. And, and if I For have sure. to, like teach people in person this game yep. and just want to have a preset map so that I don't have to worry about the whole map building yep. aspect of it. This, the, the prelims map is the map I would use every time. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. If it, I'm, I'm not saying I'm a, we're, we are better designers than the people who made TI. I'm, I no way would I ever suggest that, right. but I will always recommend our prelims map over anything in the uh, TI like booklet. Like the, yeah. the preset maps and that I are mean, in there. Maybe the prelim to me, the prelims map is like you just said, Root. That is the map I want to send beginners because it's like, hey, you're gonna have a comfortable game. Yep. You're not gonna nothing crazy is gonna happen that completely mm -hmm. ups. You're gonna be able to learn the game on this map. Yeah, and that's yeah. I think the prelims map will stand the test of time. I just know that the finals map is the one I most want to continue to play on. Maybe we should start a campaign to get the prelims map into the ti booklet what do you think about that what do you think <laughs> yeah about that'll work out great hashtag why well, what would the hashtag for that movement be um there's not a good one hashtag prelim <laughs> okay well it'll just be really long it'll be like hashtag hey dane Put please the let the prelims <laughs> map from the scpt tournament be the new ti booklet map that's the hashtag hashtag go. hey dane please let the ti the space cats peace turtles patreon tournament prelims map be the new yeah. pre map in the book uh sorry wait uh uh what is in it? the booklet and hey, you know, type all that out <laughs> the great thing is twitter doesn't uh, limit you to only 140 characters anymore so you can get yeah, all that we can true. finally fit it that's true hey can we talk about the draft some um uh, I, we talked about the maps so there's, oh, there's one ahead, more bro. little aspect that we didn't quite touch on about things that i, I thought were surprising and, oh and sure it, it kind of yeah, yeah. it, it's sort of similar to people playing very safe but people were also very friendly in this tournament. yeah they were sweet um, yeah by and large. which is great i mean yeah, i love it, it. I, it's it's the thing i'm surprised yeah. by that is was the it best. great <laughs> I, I don't know if it was great matt i don't know <laughs> i i think i i wanted more blood i think i would have had more blood well, okay, I'll I'll put it this way. I'm glad there weren't any games that ended awkwardly. Oh, that's because a good point. of hurt feelings. Well, I'm well glad, there was one I'm game glad... that ended awkwardly, Matt. You you do know <laughs> about the one game that did end awkwardly. <laughs> but... I'm but I wasn't there, so it's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but but almost every game like was was even when someone won. It was applause and congratulations for yeah, that that's player, true. which that's was true. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. What what a community ha we have where we can have this tournament where people, when when this tournament ends, people are just like, wow, they played great. I'm glad they won and whatever. We're moving. Like, there just wasn't, there was nothing bad about it. I think, I think yeah. that friendly aspect was something I definitely agree I did not expect. I mm -hmm. thought there would be some people that would really be cutthroat and, like, break deals in, like, the most just... Yeah, and worst and like, ways. And I totally get playing friendly and being friendly and not breaking deals when you're playing with your friends or even in the TTS community because like you, your your reputation and and your yeah. 
your friendliness is something that you that's important, right? Like you need to take right. into consideration right. when you make those choices. But in a tournament, a it's a, it's competitive, and b yep. at the end of the day, I don't think anyone's really going to hold it against you as much as they would in a casual game. Very true. A deal, right? Because like yep. Yep. because it's more competitive, it's more okay to be more cutthroat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even in that game 18 of the prelims where the support for the throne thing happened, like, the player that gave that support for the throne away, uh, it's not like everyone hates that person. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not yeah. like people just lambast that person on the Discord. Or, yeah. There's there's not really hurt feelings. It's just kind of like, it was a tournament. Like, what what do you want out of it? I don't, I'm glad I, we yeah. got at least one, honestly. Uh, yeah. See, that's the thing. Can, we, like... can we talk about that? Okay, I, I do want to bring up in this same discussion the fact that we had, I feel like, every primary controversial thing you can have in a TI game that happened in this tournament. Sure, <laughs> and like at least once. But, at least once. But it wasn't. It wasn't like it's not like people were there. There were we at least had examples of like people betraying deals. Yep. Um, we had an example of a support for the throne win. Like yep. all of those controversial topics of TI, they did appear, but it would just be like the one example, and mostly. We got over a hundred people together on the internet to be very sweet and good sports to each other, basically, yeah. which is kind of yeah. crazy. I mean, like, there's not a lot of communities on the internet where you could get a right. hundred people together and well, them not all mostly be turds. Right, so. and that doesn't even happen on the TTS community. Like on TTS, <laughs> true. there are That's numerous true. people who talk about like, "Oh, I'll never play with so and so ever again." And right. it's like, and, <laughs> and yet I feel like we had, yeah, I, I can't think of anyone in the tournament where people are like, "Oh, we'll never play with." Well, they're blacklisted from the community because right. they did this behavior. It's like, no, nobody, everyone will play with anyone that was in that tournament. Yep. Yeah, and and several people who play games together are we have we know of at least one game where they like immediately scheduled another game right. with each other yeah one of the semis know? game semis i think it was semis one of the semis games that like the next weekend or like 3 days later they all played a game together again that's yeah. like my favorite and thing that happened and i think i saw the finalists talking about getting together to play again too. yeah <laughs> well, they're not they're not allowed to play a game together unless we are streaming it. I'll say yeah, that. actually, no, uh, they can't play together because the, that that if somebody else wins, then that delegitimizes <laughs> our finalists. So no, nine yeah. of spades. You're under contract, buddy. You can't be just yeah. playing games. You don't get to be in that game. You, you got to retire from Twilight Imperium now. Like you can't just play. It's forever. like it's like being Miss Universe. You work for us now. Yeah, <laughs> you got to hit the circuit. We're we're putting you on the circuit. Hey, let's talk about the draft. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the draft in general. Mm -hmm. So the draft was really a convoluted thing. I don't think it was ever controversial. I think people were kind of like, eh, the draft is fine. Um, but I do want to make special mention of the draft never did what I what I wanted it to do. Meaning, I think the draft was good, and I'm, I'm glad our tournament did it. I don't think we'll ever do it again, not even because I think it's bad. I continue to say this I just think every tournament should try a new approach, do something different, shake mm -hmm. it up. You know what I mean? I, don't, I just don't think there's a, I don't think there is one way that TI should be set up in the in the faction picking phase and map building. Yeah. And so I just want every tournament to do it differently. Um, so for our method that we tried with this singular tournament, uh, I'm surprised people didn't play it as cooperatively as I expected they would. So I have a question uh, for you, Matt, about that. Yeah. Um, in many of the games you like the the moderation starts right away right with mm -hmm. sitting people down telling people what order they're going to be doing everything in and mm -hmm. you deal out the races and you tell people that they can take time to talk about it if they want yep but also i i noticed that several times you 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 did kind of like tell people okay Put up, put out your bands, or is everyone ready? Like, mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. there, there were. Well, I, do you think that there wasn't as much talk about it because you didn't just let them decide when to st when to start the next part of the the draft? You kind of. I mean, I hope not. That it was never my intent to rush the draft along. Uh, I, what it always I, came I think down sometimes to it is, just had to happen though, because sometimes yeah, it was like people aren't talking. Start Some, time yeah, or where yeah, yeah. we were at. Yeah, depending on our time, depending on how much time we had in some of the games. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, it was just like read the room. You know, if people aren't yeah. talking about it, I can't. Just, I'm not going to just <laughs> sit here for five <laughs> minutes and wait for people to ban a faction. Like, let's move it along. If no one's going, because there were games where people immediately started talking. It was like, ooh, okay, let's sit back. Let's let them do. It. Let's let's see this through. But but there were plenty of games where no one was really taking the bait, and I just have to move it along so yeah it was never my intent to moderate people through the draft to not talk about it 
Um, and in fact, if anything, I would say I tried to encourage it because early on I didn't say things like feel free to talk through this. Mm -hmm. I think people weren't exactly sure how to think about the draft. So in our yeah. first few prelims games, people didn't talk about it at all. Just They just started doing it. And I was like, no, I want you to be talking about it. So I, that was me kind of like cheating the system a little bit to be like at the beginning, hey, feel free to talk about it. Sure. And then I just sat back and, and hoped they would. If they didn't, all right, I'll step back in and I'll, and I'll moderate. But I, I do think my goal was for people to I, – I think it is a misplay with the draft – to not talk to everybody the whole time. I think the draft should actually take a decent amount of time because you aren't guaranteed anything. You're not guaranteed a slice. You're not guaranteed a faction. So you need to make sure that there is a faction for every slice. That's my opinion. I think if you're doing the, if you're doing the draft, your goal should be that everyone puts in a faction that's going to fit into a slice. If, if anything, like you should be starting to pre-assign them. That was especially my thought process with the finals map. Where there are three types of there, there are two sets of slices, right? There are sli three aggressive slices and three defensive slices. And for me, it was all about like the players need to make sure there are three aggressive factions and three defensive factions in the game. Sure, right? that to needs that. to be so, a part of the thought process. And the fact that that didn't quite come to fruition, like I hoped it would, is just proof that like that's just not, especially in a competitive game. It's a competitive game. We're not going to play cooperatively. I think the draft might work better in casual games. Yeah, than it I, does in the tournament. I think that part of the reason that didn't happen to the degree you wanted might be because there's... I feel like there would be a fear that if if someone nominates a faction that is not necessarily the best faction, but a, a particularly good faction for a particular uh -huh. slice, that, yep. as you said, they're not guaranteed to get that, so they're potentially nominating a good combination for someone else. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, I, I think my hope was always that everyone ended up with a good faction in the slice that is good for them. And there's no way to guarantee that. It's, just, it's a flaw in thinking. It's, it's, it's my bad for thinking that way. And more again, it works better in a casual game where it's like, why don't we? In a casual game, you can sit down and say, hey, why don't we all just get a good faction and a good slice? Like, why do we have to be yeah. cutthroat in this part of it? Let's all play a faction that's going to do well in the slice. And we yeah. did see, like, I would say two or three games where that. I, I'll say this. I think Kraken is the player who more than anyone tapped into that mentality. He cracked me mm -hmm. up because I like, I think in every game that he played, he like, there was some discussion about how the draft should go at the beginning. And then yep. he destroyed everything he talked about. He would go against <laughs> it. Yeah. Right. He would do all this effort of like, let's put in good factions. And then it's like, oh, how did Muai get in here? Oh crap. <laughs> yeah. What happened? Uh -oh. it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was so funny to watch. I think, I think that happened twice and it just cracked yeah. me up both times. Yeah. But he he was always right away like let's get good factions in let's not ban let's who's got what I've, these are the three things in my hand what do you guys want me to ban and that's how I wanted I didn't think you get three factions secretly but I never wanted people to keep secrets about what they were going to ban I I kind of wanted people to talk through it but sure. I encourage players to try it in their casual games um, because I I just think Our... I th I think there's something to it but I, I I think it wasn't actually suited for a tournament as well as I hope. Sure. Are yeah. you surprised that the Sar got banned so much and the no. Jolnar oh, and no. Sol did not get banned no. nearly as much? Well, they did get banned a lot, they, though. I mean, they I got think banned, but they, were also, they got through a couple times. There were also several times where they... Well, there were a couple times they got played, each of them, and there were some times where they got nominated and didn't get played, I think. Get picked. I, maybe that happened, like, once. I, th yeah. I think no, we have a little like the... bit of a recency bias because essentially what happened was Sar was pretty fairly normal in the in the prelims. Wasn't but then once we true. got past the prelims, they all held. Yeah. They were, like, all, like, no Sar. And it never and we never saw him before. again. I don't remember if we said this on air, but we've said this before of Sar is unique in that it's not that people are afraid of Sar running over the game and winning. It's that everyone knows Sar is probably going to swallow one person's slice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And nobody wants to even, like, oh, maybe I'll get Sar, but maybe I won't, and maybe I'll be adjacent to Sar, and maybe Sar will completely ruin my game. That's and a good point. nobody wants to be in that position. Yeah. So people ban Sar because Jolnar, ah, we can probably deal with. Soul, we might be able to deal with. Sar? If they come for me, I'm screwed. And and my game's out, and four other players get to play against Sar. There is that. another factor here. I feel like this is a little bit simpler, which is that I think the prelims map was not very good for Sar. 
So no. not yeah. only is SAR like a faction that I think people are generally kind of scared of and kind of knee jerk will be like, oh, we got to get rid of them. But like they didn't particularly perform yeah. well in the first round of the tournament. So I think people were right. even just kind of like, like kind of getting used to the new factions that yeah. we were kind of seeing like all kind of scoot up. Like factions that I felt like were just below the top tier. Like right. factions like l1 and barony and necro were all just kind of like shifted up in the tournament logic yeah um, yep. so i think and we, i like i, think I just i really like that i want that that's again that's why i think every tournament should try a new method because i think of it in the same way of the the meta of dota if you know anything about dota you know they put out patches all the time and mm-hmm. every time they put out a patch four or five heroes just go into the dumpster right. and like four or five become completely broken so good you got to get them in every single game and in tournaments you have this like ban pick thing and that's certainly what we were trying to do with our drafting i mean that was the whole thing hunter you were the one who wanted to do like a ban pick phase and and that's what we developed the draft based off of we wanted it to be sort of like dota and i want that same mentality going forward of like some tournaments this faction is going to be the good one some tournaments it's this one it like just depends on your how you do the maps and how you do the the drafting because i think that's what makes for more engaging tournaments yeah rather than every tournament is by the books and yeah so like the only way to make things different is to switch up how the game is started right right exactly that's the only way you have to patch the game i honestly this is a really weird idea i had and i i Feel free to just shoot this out of the sky. But, uh, but it was something that occurred to me like halfway through the process that I didn't think about it again until now. I almost uh, was of the opinion that not like the hands that you're dealt at the beginning mm-hmm. shouldn't even be random. Like, yeah, that, I that wish there was a way des- to not do it random. I agree. We should decide like, all right, so there's this one hand and that's like. Yeah. I don't know, like Sar, Muat, Nalu, or something like that. I don't know. It right. wouldn't be that. I but you, kind of you get agree. What I'm I mean, I wish, I wish there wasn't. That was the only random element in our drafting process. We worked pretty hard to make sure there weren't very many random elements. And that one's, I don't think that random element is very impactful. And if anything, that that random element is what encouraged things like Jolnar or Soul to get everyone. Like if you get yeah. Jolnar and Soul in your hand, yeah. one of them's getting through. That's okay, interesting. That's a different I, game. I actually kind of like that and, idea. And I, I, hands yeah. of, of factions. But I agree. Yeah. I, I, I would like, I would love a tournament to have no randomness at all. That would be awesome. Going, I mean, going into the, the drafting. Obviously, there's what, randomness from the rest so of the game. What, what but do you, in the, what do you in the think then, stuff. taking that idea a little bit further, what do you think of having a tournament where there's like 18 games or whatever uh, of not just the same map and the same faction choices in your the band pick phase, but also the same objectives that come up every time? Do you think that yeah. it, you could get interesting information out of that? Do you think it would be too mm-hmm. weird because people know what objectives are coming up? ahead of time i think it's a problem because it becomes age of empire rules where you Mm -hmm. you know the objectives it's a completely different game sure it's cool that's cool it's a cool thing to do and it should be done it's a fun tournament idea but it is certainly a very different game than twilight imperium i i honestly i kind of like it because i I, know i i agree i like it i'm just saying a big part of twilight imperium is you don't know the objectives coming up it could be to play to play an age of empire tournament would be awesome because then it's then you get this completely different type of play it could be it could be the sort of thing where all the games are happening simultaneously so maybe it's just like a few games at a local con or something but the tournament director stacks the objective deck so they know ahead of time but the players all don't so that it ends up being that that they're all the same but they don't know actually that i'm super in favor of uh, but e- even if it is, everybody just knows what the objectives are going to be going into it. Mm-hmm. It's just a very, it's a, a completely different thing. Yeah. Uh, let's let's move on. We talked about the specific maps, but I do want to talk about a little bit of how we felt about the fact that this tournament was preset maps um, and not building maps or cooperative building maps or anything like that. What did that, what did that give us, and what did that take away from us? Sure. Um, so uh, what it gave us was consistency of information. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, which was a big thing for us, I think. Going into this, we wanted the tournament, we wanted to do a cool tournament, but we, were, we, we saw it as an opportunity, and we went, we got to do something that lets us collect some interesting statistics. Yeah, so, yeah it, I agree it, there for sure. It the does maps give are you, important. Yeah, it gives you some statistics that you can't, or that, that are a little bit more informative than if every map is different. It also, yep. um, one of the things I liked about it is that it puts everyone on an even footing going into the mm-hmm, game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, and I just I just love the idea that people can prep for it. I think that's the yeah, best. That's, true that's why we threw that loop into the final game of, like, you don't get to prep for it. You're supposed to be the six best players in the world, so 
so deal with it. Right. But in all the other games, it was my favorite part was hearing people talk about the maps and prepping and getting yeah. ready. And I, I just think that adds a lot to it. And I, I think that is important for tournaments, for the mentality of tournaments, of like we're prepping for it. We care a lot about it. It's just about the vibe of the tournament that people are invest. Because if, it's, if you don't have that, if you can't lean into that, then there is nothing to prep for. You yeah. just play games of TI and hope. But that pay- the fact that people can look at a map and analyze it and break it down and play on it a few times and see what works and what doesn't, that yeah. interests me a lot for competitive and, play. And with a tournament this big, with this wide of a, an, an entrance audience... Uh, there's like such a wide variety of skill levels that just putting one more thing into the tournament that puts people on an even footing to like even yeah. that discrepancy out a little bit makes everything more interesting. Right. Uh, and give, yeah, gives there's, those there's, people a leg up. Right. There's kind of the argument here that like the whole idea of doing a tournament is you really do want to find some of the best players, but TI is an incredibly random game. Yeah. And if you play it a hundred percent by the book, like, that's just almost too much randomness. And so we tried to reduce as many of those random factors as we could so that the o- really the only randomness that we had from that point on is the objectives and the normal randomness, dice rolls, action cards you get dealt, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But in terms of just like, in terms of, I don't know how to categorize it, but like the, the big large scale randomness that really impacts your game of like, I was, I was, you know, so and so in a in a and I'm really command counter dependent and I was in an influence poor slice. That stuff when that happens, it's it just sucks. like what are you gonna do? You're yeah. you're screwed. It, it, and so the goal fun. was to reduce that style of that stuff where you're screwed from the beginning. Yeah. We didn't we, we, we wanted to reduce as much of that as possible. And I think preset maps are required for that mentality. Yeah. Yeah. I also think it's that's just our style. Like we we've yeah. always been kind of against the having uh, a game where your slice is just not fun, so it yeah. isn't fun. Like, yeah. Um, so I, I think if, if there's anything that it took away uh, from the game, I think that there is something to be said for competitively building maps, and it it, yeah. it is it is a skill. It, it's not it it's not just something is. that you can just do off the cuff and have right. yeah. and be good at. I, I don't think it's like a huge skill, but it does. What what you but do and the choices it. you make do matter. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think we'll ever discredit that, and especially after last year's Gen Con, where we saw a few different plays, where it was like, oh my gosh, that is a brilliant map building decision that that person made. Yeah. That kind of stuff. I mean, I, I love that. I love those. That's why I want tournaments to still do that. I don't want yeah. anyone to ever abandon. That's why I love that uh, the bag draft in TTS mm-hmm. community is becoming kind of a thing. I, I love that. I, I want people to keep exploring new ways, even if it's not preset maps, but new ways to build the map that that alter preconceptions and things like that. I just I think any exploration into that territory is great because any way that you can change the setup of the game without changing the game itself is great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think also, like, I, I we've said it here, like, many times, but the thing about competitive map building that I think always specifically p- puts me off is, like, even if you're good at it um, and, and you're making good choices and, you're, and you do something that really hurts another player, that phase of the game is, like, what? Like, it's not very long unless you're taking right. a really long time to do it. So it feels mm-hmm. weird that in some ways this 10 hour long game could be decided in yep. like 15 minutes at the very beginning. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. always been my, my part that I hate about it. Yeah. I'm with you. There's ways to get around it. Can we talk about, let's, let's do just some kind of brief shout outs. What do you say? Yeah. Of, of the players that maybe we knew about beforehand or even just in seeing them in the prelims or whatever players we thought played great, and just didn't didn't get to make it to the finals, didn't get to make it to the semis or whatever. I think there's some room to give some shout outs. I think this is a little bit um, of our selfish way of trying to justify later all star games. We want to start building <laughs> hype for these players who didn't get to the finals, but we want to host games where we where we bring them in. Um, anyways, so who who are some of your guys' top? I don't want to say top. Every there were lots of really great players, but who are just like people we either expected a lot out of and and just didn't see them make it or or whatever it is. I think the number one that we've talked about plenty is Mantis, right? Mantis right. came into this tournament and we were, everyone just like thought Mantis, everyone talks about how good Mantis is and it's like terrifying about how good Mantis is. And honestly, the game Mantis lost was because not, not solely do this, but because of a lot of really bad gravity rift yeah. rolls. Yeah. You got, yeah. You got so like that was luck, heartbreaking. luck, 
luck can tear a player down in a major way. Um, so who else? Who else do you guys want to just? Well, give I want to say something to? about Mant uh, that kind of clarifies yeah. the Mantis thing real quick. I think so. Earlier we were talking about like the general attitude of the game of players being like going kind of tortoise style versus like hair style and just kind of yeah. slow and steady. And to me, that being the overall tone of the tournament, Mantis as a player seemed to individually be. I don't know, like very much within that way of thinking. I don't know. Does that make right. sense to everybody? I, yeah, I yeah. actually have probably seen him the least of the three of us uh, I, play. I think, that's, I think it's hilarious because he lost his last game because he took so many risks and they didn't mm-hmm. with him, yeah. which, is, which is pretty funny. But he is... Right. I, Generally. I, yeah, but he is, and I think that this is why we all expected so much of him. He is, in my opinion, from what I've seen of the TTS you know, world, he is the most consistently good player. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's good in, like like you just started to say, he's good in that TTS world, right? Yeah, sure. TTS is, we have to continue to say, TTS is different than playing it is. Twilight Imperium in real life. Yeah. But Mantis and, and seems it's not, to do very well yeah. in that atmosphere. And, and it's not he, just, he, it, he has learned how to manipulate Yeah, that. and it's not just that he wins a lot. It's just that he's he always does well, regardless of whether right. that's 10 points or 9 points or 8 points. He always gets up there. He's always yeah. doing the right things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, other someone else. Uh, we have a number of people to to mention, but um, I think the other big one for a lot of us that we talked about was Seven as another yeah. uh, frequent. Well, player. talk talk about the opposite of Mantis, right? <laughs> right. Se- seven is the player we just all expected to do. Cra- seven does crazy things, and sometimes it leads to like, oh my gosh, what a crazy win! And sometimes it's like, wow, Seven really risked it all for just nothing and completely like <laughs> floundered there. But that's like Seven is good for TV, and oh, so yeah. we just he we were all good just for TV. Exci- that's we such a wanted good way Seven to put it. in more games because he's great for TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very good for TV. Um, I I want to shout out uh, to a player that I feel like. Uh, I shouted out to kind of early on in the tournament, but be- because yeah. he did not make it through, uh, we have not had a reason to talk about him since. But um, Joey uh, yeah. is a player that we saw originally at the Gen Con tournament. You know that video you still haven't gotten? Uh, <laughs> he's in that. He's in that. And he, he played as the, the clan of Sar in that yeah. game. And he he played very, very 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 good and it was very very he was also somebody he's kind of like seven where he was very good for tv so i felt like as a crew we all had like kind of a giant bias towards him in the game i won't spoil how things turn out uh but But, i will say that while the game was going we were all kind of like this guy's good for tv he does weird stuff uh, a lot of flashy plays Uh, and then what was heartbreaking about he was game three if you want to check out his game in the prelims um Mm was due to the way that the draft worked out, he actually did not get to play as Sar, which is, I think, I think the faction that really kind of engages his brain. And in fact, yeah. Kraken played as Sar in that game, and Kraken right. actually won that game and went on to the semifinals right. as Sar. So that was kind of a, a heartbreaking um, game, yeah. I think, for, for me as somebody who kind of had a bias towards Joey um, yep. because of the play that we'd seen before. Uh, but... I, I do, uh, and also I don't know how familiar Joey was with TTS. I feel that's, like there I think was that's a, a TTS part, I, bias yes. with this whole thing. Most of the people that went through were very familiar with TTS. Basically. Yeah, yeah. I I think being really good at TTS is not does not necessarily mean you are great at normal TI and vice versa. Yeah, you I, can be really good at TI and you can do not very well in a TTS. Yeah, I, I do want to address that point just real quick and say that while I think. Most, if not all, of the people who ended up in the finals are do frequently play on TTS. I don't think that that's why. I don't think it's a major reason that they made it as far as that they as as they, as they did. You know? No, you have to, to be. I think to it, get to the finals, you have to be good at all of it, right? right? Like you right. have to be good at TI and be good on TTS. Yeah, I, that's sort I, of the that's the trick to it. Yeah, I think that there were maybe a couple people that it affected, but I think overall the TTS thing wasn't a drawback. I I I'm gonna differ a little bit, also because yeah, we, we have disagree. another example of a of a, a guy. His name was Paul. He was yeah. another person that we saw in the Gen Con tournament, who also was very impressive, very fun to watch. He played as the Nalu Collective in the Gen Con tournament, and he he right. got to play as Nalu in the. So he was like kind of the opposite of Joey, where we were like, oh, we've seen this guy play. Uh, he's very good. Uh, but uh, in his game, which was game six. I Okay. Um, no, wait, no, it was not game six. We had so many Pauls um, yeah, in the game. I don't remember where he it's was. It's overwhelming. At. Well, uh, oh, wait, just found him. He's in game 10. 
Um, in uh, in his game, it seemed that that his lack of familiarity with TTS was kind of a detriment to his ability to play the game very fluidly and with like yeah. kind of the level that we had seen at Gen Con because we saw yeah. him play at a very high level there. Right. And then on TTS, it's it just seemed like it was a bit of a detriment. So I will yeah. say I don't think it was like a bunch of players that this affected, but no. it did feel like there there were some examples that we could think yeah. of that were like, oh, this player seemed like they didn't they just weren't as comfortable in TTS. Yeah. And TI is a very complicated game, so you can get stuck on little stuff like for that. For sure. I want to burn through a few extra names. Um, mm-hmm. I just want to throw out, like, I had high expectations for Zendog. I had high expectations yeah. for TG Welch. I had high expectations for Dodonko and for Jimbov. All four of those players. I can't, like, quanta. I, I, you know, we don't need to go into, like, all these specifics with them. But those are all four players that I think in another tournament in the future, we'll see them do very well. It was just yep. sort of circumstances of their games that they didn't move on. Yeah. Um, yeah. But all, all four of those are ones that I want to look out for. I want to call out TG Welch in particular is just, like, he beat me really solidly like maybe like three or four weeks ago not that i'm any good obviously i'm really bad (laughs) and i suck but uh it was a game where i was i was ghost which has been kind of my jam lately um and i just got to nine points and there was you need 10 to win actually um oh but i could not get a 10th point yeah, and then he turns out he it. could. So then he won. <laughs> so I just want to call that out again. If that's the that's the thing. If you ever if you ever beat I don't know about Matt. Actually, Matt, if you beat Matt, he tends to bury it in the in the yard somewhere, and you'll never hear about it ever <laughs> again. Uh, but if you beat me, I'll I'll talk about it forever. So TG Welch has uh, has um, got me. The last thing I think we have to talk about is the the Euro uh, problem, the Euro situation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Okay, um, that's we kind had, of a weird we had, way to put it. I don't. Really... I know it's a weird. It's a weird phrasing. But we had players like Panster, um, Lazuski, Evernoob. We had these players who played incredibly well, mm-hmm. but were in games where they were maybe the only European player. Mm-hmm. And I do think there's a style. There is clearly a stylistic difference between yeah. most American players and most European players. Right. And I think whoever has the majority in their game. That dictates how that game is going to go. So if you put five sure. Americans and one European in a game, it's not that the European style is worse than American, but when you have five yeah. Americans playing the American style and you have European playing the European style, th- there's no competition because the five Americans are going to boost each other up just based on their play style. And so we saw a lot of that. This is this tournament was mostly in American time zones. We are an English-speaking podcast, so our fans are mostly English-speaking, which means primarily american uh like there, there's just there's so many elements where this whole tournament at large was geared more towards americans um it's it's part of like we even saw it in the finals mage is from america but he plays in australia and uh, i think you could give a pretty solid argument that the finals round didn't go so great for him because he had to wake up at 4 30 a.m right yeah, that, yeah. Definitely that, that hurt that sure. just straight up hurts him he yeah. had another, his semis i think was the same situation where he w- had to wake up at this horrible horrible hour and it, it definitely impacts players. The, there were plenty of European games where the Europeans were up until 4 a.m., 3 a.m., something like that. And, like, it's hard to keep focus. Yeah. So I, I think if we ever were able to play a tournament where we catered it more towards European time zones and, and had more Europeans, we would see more Europeans make it to the finals. It's just a matter of the circumstances of this tournament that we saw um, not quite as... Uh, we didn't see as many wins from Europeans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do do you have like any specifics about what you think are the differences between European and American styles? Like I mean, I I because I, I, I in have a general one sense, thought. sure. And and I don't want it to sound like I'm being cliche or or like I don't know whatever. But you know the the cliche of like of what Germans is like German engineering and things like that. And I just, I do think some of that stuff kind of holds true in that American players play the social game and the meta game a lot more than European players do. And you see European players playing the, the sort of unaligned Magi style of like, I'm going to win space risk and then I'll, I'll, I'll adapt to the meta as I need to, but I don't lean into it in the way that someone like Schroeder does. I want to clarify something real quick because I this is a kind of a this is a tough subject to kind of paint with a wide brush Absolutely. on. Uh, yes. I I think we can maybe say that the European players that that entered this tournament, which was not like a large like no. group of people, maybe yep. exerted these qualities. 
a little more. But I don't know. I don't know enough about like Euro, Euro games and p- the people that play them enough to say that this is even typical. I mean, like so, Imsen wasn't really quite like that. Like, right, I don't know right, that Imsen yeah. fits in that no, category. Really there are at all. all kinds of exceptions to that rule for sure. Yeah. There were twenty-seven out of one hundred and eight players that right. were European. And, I, and I've, I mean, on the TTS server, I've played with Europeans several times, and many games have at least one European player in them especially on the yeah. weekends. And and in my experience, and this this is kind of tied into what you said, Matt, but in, in general, and again, this doesn't apply to everybody, and I don't think that this is a bad thing either, but European players tend to be more rigid in how they approach deal making and how they yes. like what they think something is worth. And they right. they don't they don't want to back down on that or take take a deal yeah. that they think is not doesn't have the value that they expect it to have. I feel like they take an insult if you offer them something that isn't obviously what the value should be, right? Yeah. If you if you undercut them, they're just like, I'm not even going to I'm not even going to talk to you. Yeah. If right. you're going to do that, if you're going to yeah. bring that to the table, I'm not going to sit here and wheel and deal with you. You're being a used car salesman. I don't yeah. want to do that. That's dumb. Yeah. Like, right. The, they sh- just, the they Schroeder don't... versus like somebody like Panster or Ms. Yeah. Lewinsky type of uh type of like thought experiment, I feel like kind of plays out like this. I will say though, the idea of us talking about this in this context without any of these people being here, I would <laughs> right. say uh, totally flawed. that we have kind of now, in my opinion, committed ourselves to having uh, some of these people on the show to talk about oh, for sure. their yeah, own should. experience and this kind of uh, American versus Euro style of yeah. uh, Twilight Imperium. Yeah, I think uh, it would just be great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that would be a great episode. And also, like, I don't know how much more my tummy can take us uh, talking about this without them nope, being here to speak let's for move themselves. On. Yeah, let's talk about uh, let's talk about streaming and recording real quick. I think this mm-hmm. is a brief point to talk about, uh, but we recorded the first twenty three games. We streamed the last two. Yeah. <laughs> uh, initially, we were very afraid of streaming. We didn't want um, streaming to be something that could lead to someone gaining an advantage if they happened to be watching the stream. Um, and I do think it's worth pointing out of like, we eventually found a way to get around it, but I think it also, I do think it relied a little bit on, we ended up with players we knew well, and we had been talking to for months. And so we trusted them to not do anything in the prelims round. I still stand by, we can't stream those games. It's a bunch. It's too many people, too many variables. I can't trust everyone to not try to be influenced by a stream even if a stream is no private information you're only getting like the fact that there's a twitch chat of people like throwing out suggestions there are plenty of times you get reminded by that you there's something you you personally would have forgotten but didn't because the twitch chat called it out now we saw instances where there was there's still other ways to be dodgy right within this tournament the fact that we can't all be in a room and control the environment means that the whole system is flawed and so maybe we shouldn't be that afraid of streaming but I think going forward, we're probably going to be more open to streaming. Um, and it just depends on the size of the tournament and the size of the rounds. But I, I, I felt like that was worth pointing out yeah. that we we were learning as we went yeah, on how it, to go about it, recording this. It was a really cool experience for me. Because I, I came into this having very little streaming experience yeah. uh, at all. And, and no experience editing and uploading videos at all. Like literally zero. Wow. Right. Right. Uh, so I, I like watched a 30 minute video on YouTube about how to use DaVinci Resolve <laughs> and then just yeah. threw some stuff together. And it was fun. I, I enjoyed it and I learned a lot. And I, I wish that I had the time and the energy to make highlight videos for every game that we had. But like after the first, I think so I did much. four. And then it after so that, it's just, time. yeah, man, it, it was so time consuming and like a lot of just weird things going on in my own life. And I just didn't have the time to keep up with it. But. Uh, I don't think it can ever be stressed enough that editing is just the worst. It takes a lot of time, especially when it's a 10-hour video. Like, you, you have to either remember everything or have taken great notes or watch through everything again. And, like, that's just so demanding yeah. and time-consuming. It has been but, eight months since Gen, since Gen Con, and I still don't have a Gen Con <laughs> video. Right. There's still no Gen Con. Hey, Matt, did you know that there's not a Gen Con video yet? <clears throat> <sighs> I will uh, anyways, I, will I, want, also... I want to talk about streaming a little bit uh, real yeah. quick because uh, I, I, I do want to <laughs> say that I feel uh, I, I agree with everything you guys said about like, I don't I just don't even think it would be worth it to really stream the prelims if we did it again. Not to right. not to insult no, anybody, I, but that's like no, so many games. And I'm not really sure that that also I feel like the game being streamed is something that like 
you should work up to. It's like the thing of like, you yep. know, if you're playing in this tournament, you, are, you're, you should yeah. be excited by the fact that, oh, if I make it to the next round, it'll be streamed. I do right. think we could have streamed more of the semis than we did. Yes, um, absolutely. But we were scared of it. Um, right. And it, we burnt ourselves out in the prelims. We recorded, we, we put so much effort into getting those recorded that if we just hadn't recorded any of those games and we were just knocking uh -huh. them out, mm -hmm. we would have been like really invigorated and ready to go in the semis to start like, getting recordings and streaming stuff and and it would have been a different to be mentality fair, but we we, we also, really burnt ourselves out in the prelims we also would have run into all of the uh, problems that we ran into in the prelims games and ironed very out. true <laughs> yeah we worked we worked out <laughs> yeah. some technical glitches early on that was yeah. very helpful yeah. um but going forward in future tournaments i think you'll see that from us i think you'll see us just completely avoid the prelims and yeah. it's like no 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 we stream when the stuff gets the, crazy when we've vetted some players and whatnot and the huge bonus to streaming over recording is that the the commentary team can interact with twitch chat which is yeah is a huge very is a huge boon when you're streaming for eight plus hours because yeah. like yeah. eventually you kind of start running out of steam and there's there are moments of silence and you just you're like yeah. how do i feel this i'm tired and i don't know what to say i think i i think in the future if we're if we're gonna if we're gonna play some like oh let's uh let's talk about if we ever do this again which i don't even know that we even know if we will uh but <laughs> um i in the in the ongoing and i know we don't we don't really talk about this too much but talked about it enough but the ongoing debate between you know commentary versus um the uh the people talking um, I feel yeah. like if we had another sh uh, shot at it, what I would want to do is for the streaming video to be mostly uncut, raw, no commentary. And if you want, you know, me to talk, you will just do it in chat. So I'm yeah. just chatting with people right. via text, but I'm just giving you basically the feed raw. Um, yeah. And you could you can have that, and then and then mm -hmm. that could even be that could even. That would maybe even be worth living on the YouTube somewhere, even though I don't, I don't even know where I stand about like us. I feel like one mistake that we that we maybe made, uh, or it's not even really a mistake. It's just like we didn't really know how we wanted this to work. But a lot of the content is available in different places. Like there's a lot of overlapping. Like oh, you could listen yeah. to the podcast and get our summary of it, or you could go to the YouTube, and then this yeah. would be like a whole other thing of like oh, and then there's like two videos available one right. with commentary well, one without i don't know and and with all that you're getting into i mean we're just getting into like different people want different stuff out of this content and we chose certain things we we chose to make what, what we kind of wanted to make out of it and even right. then we were learning as we went so not all of it is what we wanted to get out of it mm -hmm. yeah um so all of this is a learning experience and um yeah i'll, I'll throw it out there like there's there's some things I I wish were better about all the videos, and we're those are things we're going to keep working on. So, you know, we we were experimenting with this and learning about it as we went, and so I hope people recognize that. Um, we know so, we know a lot though now. You know, I like, know a lot I, more. I now. feel like we have a but we have a good any, foundation. In, even if the stream that I just played today is any lesson, no matter how much you learn, <laughs> weird, stupid technical glitches still happen, and there's no explanation for why they're happening, and I have no idea how to fix them, and I'm sorry that they happen. Well, it's also, like you should all know that Matt has had bad luck with technology for the I have entire a, time I have a, that I've known him. Like, the I entire have a curse. time. Yeah. I have a curse where technology just breaks on me, and there's no, it's completely inexplicable. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very annoying. I'm like um, the opposite. And, I feel like in my life, my, I, I can't believe that the technology I have around me works at all because I don't know anything about it. And I, I set up yesterday's, I set up today's stream, which was now Saturday. I set up Saturday's stream on Friday for five and a half hours. Oh, my God. Um, EJ, EJ was here for four and a half of that, but I was doing pre-lighting and stuff like that for an hour before EJ showed up. Five and a half hours of testing, and we had everything dialed in and ready to go. And then, during the stream, our diary cam video basically worked like 30% of the time. Just just because, even though it worked for five hours the day before. Oh, so man. that kind of stuff happens, and I just I don't know what to tell you about when that happens. It's, it's very frustrating as a creator. Um, but it, it is what it is, and all we can do is move forward and try better next time. Let's move on. I hate this. <laughs> let's, talk about, but, let's talk about statistics. Uh, right. Statistics and the stats we collected, and I don't know. Here's the first question. Hunter Donaldson, are statistics useful? 
Uh, most of them, most no, mostly not. I'm, <laughs> it's I I think the format of trying to keep TI stats is really really difficult. But I yeah. think having a um, standard map by which the stats are judged is yep. very important. Right. Uh, if if the statistics are going to mean anything. Right. But that all being said, uh, the stats that we have collected on these on these maps that we used in the tournament, uh, yeah. it's not a big enough sample size. And right. I think there was a little bit too much stock put in the trends that we were seeing Definitely. in those stats. And really, it's like not very... It's not useful data. Yeah. I mean, if we right. had a hundred games on on these maps, it, still it would wouldn't still be, be like I don't know, like yeah, because there, yeah. there are just so many variables in this game. A hundred games, right. a well, thousand, games and, and I think that the stats we collected are reliant on the map we played on, which means the eighteen games on the prelims map is the only one that even has like a decent amount of games, right? right. The other ones are three games apiece. That's no, that's nothing. That's completely useless. Right. Even for the prelims games, though, it's eighteen games on our map with our drafting method, which is an important point. So if we're yep. talking about, like, how does this map play? Well, if you're playing it casually, Joel Nar and Sol and Saar probably get into way more games than ever did in our draft. Mm -hmm. So, like, you have to read the stats from where they're coming from, which is, like, an incredibly specific data set. And, and I don't even know enough about statistics to go on about it. But it's enough to say I'm happy we collected them. We saw really interesting things that yeah, I think are worth pointing out. Yeah, things it's, like it's fun round out. one speaker was not as important as we would have thought it was uh getting trade round one is apparently very very good or at least in this tournament setting and on on that prelims map little things like that 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 really stand out in the statistics that's more important stuff where it's like oh it's two two more games were won with this than the other thing whatever but when we see these like huge shifts in the numbers that's the only stuff i'm really looking at i'm gonna the push biggest i'm gonna push back me. a little bit on this idea though because i do i do think still i think those examples you just cited are things that more just make sense to us. And they're not necessarily, it's not necessarily the, like the stats are making us feel that way. It's uh -huh. like we can cite a couple, a really small handful of examples and be like, see, look, it happened. This is good. Trade is good. Um, but <laughs> well, it's but, mostly but, that it just makes sense to us that trade is actually really good. Like the right, argument yeah. for and, it just makes sense. And the people it's not necessarily it's, like the numbers. And, it's more the opposite for me. Like it's just the fact that like everyone freaks out about warfare or tech round one, and we didn't see either of those with like huge win percentages. I think for me, what the tournament taught me in the stats is round one isn't as important as you make it out to be. That That's, for me, what it comes down to. I think people put... We, we did 17 guides where the the notion was we're going to come at this from the first-round strategy perspective. Sure. What are you going to do in the first round, and how does that lead into the rest of your game? So, and I think that thinking is flawed. I, I think the first round is not as crucial, and it's more about how do you get yourself set up in the fourth, fifth, and sixth round. Yeah, I, I think that like what strategy card you have and where you are in the speaker order isn't as big of a deal, but I do think right. that the first round you have to make no mistakes true like, you have sure. you have to with what you have with what you with whatever what's available, you got with, no mistakes yeah, with what yeah. with what's available with what's available to you resource wise token wise strategy card wise you have to make no mistakes if you have you know whatever number of carriers whatever number of systems are in range like you just you just have to expand correctly spend things correctly uh yeah, you, you just you just have to make the right decisions because if you if you end up not being able to build an extra carrier when you're only a one carrier faction, or yeah. not being able to get a tech when you have the resources yeah. and, and like are a one tech faction, or uh, you have you know three systems next to your home home planet without uh, or with, yeah. with you know planets and you don't expand properly or something like there there are mistakes that you can make and if you make those they're really going to hurt you later in the game. Yeah, yeah. I agree the, the other stat, the other stat for me that is is I think noteworthy and is something that I just never like quantified in my head. It makes total sense, and I and I would have never disagreed with this if you had told me it. But it's just not something I thought about until seeing the numbers. But in like a final round situation, diplomacy is like the best pick, far and away. Hey, well, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. it's it's pretty good, and not to or, or more more than anything, I shouldn't say it's like oh you should definitely pick diplomacy if you're in the last round. But what we saw so many times is the player who takes imperial is going for a long shot and probably doesn't quite get it. The player who gets leadership is just banking on getting there, 
in the status phase and then gets jumped on. Yep. And Diplomacy is the one who is early in uh, in uh, scoring order and also got to lock down their home yeah, system. The, so they win yeah, a lot. Yeah, the, like those, yeah. just those things, it just makes total sense. But it's also something you can't cheat, right? You can't be first in speaker order and then pick Diplomacy because it's like, well, you're probably still if you did that then you're probably going to lose to the person with imperial or leadership or whatever like sure. it has to work in that order it's just that's the way it's going to go down is imperial then leadership then diplomacy and then for some reason diplomacy wins that that yeah, just happens that, that, so many that times. extra defensive factor on top of the early initiative is just yep. really solid yeah i I, uh, I think i'm a little more comfortable just saying that in the last round it's all about imperial leadership or diplomacy than i am yeah. in saying that diplomacy diplomacy is, is the, the best, best one, one positionally yeah. But right. depending on your game, you might you might have to uh, take a different one. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And, and of course, Nalo throws throws all of that. Uh huh. Out, you know, the the, <laughs> out the window. Out the window. Here's here's a big question: um, do, Is Nine of Spades the best player in the world? And more importantly, do tournaments result in determining who the best player is? I think this is really similar to the stats discussion. It is. Yep. It is. Actually, so it, it, fo- it follows it. The up. simple answer yeah. is no. But I think that the the last six players that we had were very good players. So I think that that does indicate that there is, it's not just luck or randomness that gets you into mm-hmm. a Absolutely. finals of a tournament. Yeah. There are skills yeah. and there is right. uh, being a good player is a big factor in, in winning. Right. We saw luck kick some players out, right? We saw great, right. amazing players lose their chance at winning a game because of bad luck. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't say some just like mediocre whatever player got to the finals just based on good luck. Yeah. I, right. I don't I do not feel that way. I feel every player we had in the finals. So it's not so much about that like I mean <laughs> there's two feelings I have about this. This is the biggest Twilight Imperium tournament, I'm pretty sure, that has ever been played. I'm willing to call Nine of Spades the best player in the world because I think that that's it's the same way you call the person who wins the gold medal in the Olympics the best player in the world. Four years from now, there might be a new best player in the world. That player's not going to win every single time. But for now, that's the best we got. Uh, so Nine of Spades is the best player in the world. And if we do a future tournament, we might get a new one. But for sure, those six players in the finals are six of the best players in yeah. the world. I, I think I, I'm going gonna, gonna to change the I'm going to change the script a little bit. I think yes. that Nine of Spades uh, is. Uh, that's as close what, what you well, i feel like what you're saying is basically that's as close as we got right now is the yeah. idea that nine of spades is is the best because he because he won but yeah. i don't feel as com- i i feel very comfortable saying he is the winner of the space cats be turtles tournament because that's true because <laughs> that's that's, that's entirely true and that's not us like growing giant brains and being like we uh-huh. we figured it out <laughs> um yeah. i don't feel super comfortable with that but what i do feel very comfortable in saying is that it did not take that many rounds to basically end up with a situation where yeah. there were six players that were some of the best players in the world. Yeah. There yep. was not a single player at that table that I was like, oh, you don't deserve to be here. Uh, yeah. You got here through trickery or like right. you got here just randomly because the RNG yeah. said you should be here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and all it took was a prelims round, a semifinal round with a knockout round. And that's it. And yeah. we And we got... Six players, and I was so happy with yeah. those I think, players. I think that it's really important to note, if you listen to the episode you guys did where you interviewed everybody, that mostly everyone's kind of general strategy and approach to the game was a method of mitigating randomness. Yes. When you yeah. boil it down to it. Yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah. That's, the, I think, one of the biggest skills in, in yep. TI and the big determining factor in how often you 100% win. 100% agree. Is... There are so many random factors in the game, so how well and how you mitigate yeah. those is yeah. huge. Right. Yeah, and, and I think what this, what this topic feeds into for me is why do we do tournaments and what's like the goal? And for me, personally, the goal is to be able to get access to record an incredibly good good game of twilight imperium yes right that that at the end of the day that's the only thing i'm seeking (laughs) other people are playing in the tournament because they want to play in a tournament and that's really really fun and they want to see how well they do for me hosting the tournament it's about i want to get to an incredibly dense complicated good game of twilight imperium getting played and we can see it at this level that you never see it at in any other circumstances can i just say how hilarious it is that we're talking about 
the best players being people who can mitigate randomness. But the fact is that that finals game was so amazing in large part because of the randomness of the agenda deck and the agendas that came up. <laughs> That's like, true. Right. That's true. Oh it was like a perfect God. game because of the circumstances that we ended up with. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. But but all of that comes down to like ending up with players who put themselves in situations where they are all good, so they're all in the running. Mm -hmm. The difference being, in a random game, you've got two really great players, two mediocre players, two bad players, two new players or whatever. Well, the two good players are going to run away with it because there's no one holding them against them. The reason we had so many agendas that were so crazy is because all six players are in the running every round, so every agenda is going to be crazy because someone's going to gain an advantage out of it, right? That's what we gain by doing these tournaments, is we gain situations where all six players are constantly in the running basically the entire game and so you get those situations where this agenda is going to be the biggest deal in the world this objective is going to be the biggest deal in the world because everyone has positioned themselves right everyone is is prepped and ready for the next phase no one has just been completely shut out yeah. um and, yeah and, and i mean it helps that you, i mean you guys rigged the deck so it kind of <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, we, we wrote a whole script it. i yeah. mean yeah, that was that was cool. All that stuff you was saying, and I was really excited. I guess hearing Oscar it, but like knowing that we did. Yeah, no, that's great. And I think they're totally gonna buy that. But we did rig the deck, so that's <laughs> that's how we did it. If you guys are wondering how you do it, you actually just go through the the deck and you find the cards that you like, and you just kind of put them in there, and you throw in like one or two bad agendas. Just it's to actually be like, really easy. Yeah. yeah, just to throw in some like <laughs> questions about whether it was rigged or not. Throw in like minister of whatever, and then, the, and then we faked like a twenty minute break to try to figure out a quote unquote rules to, uh, decision. That yeah, we exactly. Totally right, right. that we knew. Yeah, that we knew yeah. about. We, we knew. Just, we knew. Um, we just wanted the drama. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what does this mean for future space cats? Uh oh. Whoa. Uh -oh. Hey. I know. I'm jumping into it. What Everyone, turn turn it up now. Everyone, lead it in with your ear. Uh, that we're talking about uh, the future. Here's the answer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> very exciting. Uh, um, no, I, I'll say this much. I mean, we're definitely taking a, a, a smidge of a break. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take some time off. The next tournament we'll be a part of is Gen Con. There's n there's no world where we run any sort of tournament before Gen Con, which is in August. Which right? happens that in August, which means that the video for last Gen Con, what would the the deadline be for that one? so soon oh man you won't even like believe basically oh, the deadline yesterday. soon yeah no. yeah soon all right um, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> um i'm excited I, uh, for gen con because i'm gonna be there with you guys yeah, yeah yeah that's gonna be really fun that's and gonna we're gonna record great. things so much better on the front end that it will be much easier to edit <laughs> than what the nightmare i've been dealing with for eight months let's move on i can't talk about this well future... no we need, to, we need to talk about the future more and, yes. and I, I think one thing i want to say off the bat is that I don't think we're not going to do it like this ever again. Exactly no, 100%, this no. way. Like, yep. I, I think it was like, uh, it was something me and you were saying the other day was like, if we want to do this tournament again next year at the same time, we essentially yeah. need to start working very pretty soon. Uh, yeah. Cause like exactly. we were talking about this idea at about this time last year, Right. And then Jedcod happened, and then right after Jedcod, we were like, "All right, this is what we're Gotta doing." Gotta go, yeah. And yeah. And, it, and it's and I'll say this much: if it's ever a tournament this big again, if we're gonna try for a hundred and eight or a two hundred and sixteen player tournament, two hundred sixteen, baby. Two hundred sixteen is like the magic number, right? That's thirty six games of six. That leads to six games of six. That leads to one game of six. Oh that would be God. awesome. Don't even. Say but that's. That. <laughs> <laughs> colossal but what it would require that be, that's a community effort that's not a space cats peace turtles thing um yeah this this tournament was a space cats peace turtles effort and and with patreon uh, contributions it that's like the reason it was able to happen in the future if we want a bigger tournament or even a tournament that equals this size it comes down to we got to bring people on to help us uh with the moderating and with everything um I, and i know that for me going forward what i'm more interested in is more smaller tournaments. Um, I think it would be fun to do some... I don't know what invitationals look like. I don't know what like how, how we get people into these, but I would love to do 36-player tournaments, and each one is a different thing. You know, I want to do a 36-player 14-point tournament. 
I want to do a 36 player yeah, tournament a, that is using Age of Empire rules. I want I just want to do these yeah. little experimental tournaments where each one is small and it's not like it's this huge thing of like we're going to crown the best but it's like no, we're just doing this little thing and we're going to see how it goes with this this kind of smaller version of a tournament. What about that, that this? Stuff what about I'm this? In. Um we do so we do a series of 36 player um, tournaments where each winner of those tournaments will go on to eventually, when we're done with six 36 player tournaments, we will oh have God. six players that are ready to play one final game for it all. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> so each, t- but then it would be like, when you win one of these, tur- like the first player that would win this 36 player tournament, it would be like, okay, we yeah. need you to keep playing Twilight Imperium. For two years, because that's how long it will take for us to get to <laughs> the end. To get of this around whole to getting this other game. Yeah. Okay. Well, well. Here's here's the big question: Is there a world where a league fits into this uh, uh, world? Is is there a, is there a is there a league system that we can put together? What are your guys' thoughts and opinions? Root, do you want to open up leagues? on this one? Because like I, yeah. I think we all we, have a you, lot of the, stuff yeah. in our the three craw. of us. The three of us know where this question is going, but I'm asking it as though it's like, ooh, what are we thinking? It's, it's leading. Uh, Alex, it's leading to a long rant by me. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think you, you got. I'm giving you two minutes. Right. Here we go. Start. <laughs> that the clock. might be a little too too small, but I think that <laughs> right. uh, I'll be honest up front and say that yes, it's possible to have a league that works. And and it functions in a way that the community might enjoy. However, uh, I think that there are a lot of problems. Well, I'll say two main problems. Uh, One, the quickest and easiest one to talk about, uh, is that it would have to be community run. And I don't think that... I don't think that that works. I don't don't think that having any sort of even like semi-official league run by just some random volunteers is going to work out very well. People are going to drop mm-hmm. out, disappear, get bored. Uh, people are going to have to make rules calls that they aren't really qualified to make and get it wrong in bad ways. Like, that's going to happen. Um, and that that's going to really diminish the quality overall in the long run. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And primarily, the biggest thing that I... The, big, the biggest reason I don't like a league idea is that it's going to dramatically in my opinion divide the community Mm -hmm. the tts community who are primarily the people who would partake in this is not large like it's it's just not it's a it's a small group of people like there there's maybe a couple day couple games every day of the week at most and then the weekends maybe four five right right um which is great like if you're looking for a game you can usually get into one right like there's yeah. there's probably a couple of games a day that you can just hop in if you're free but mm-hmm. if you take that small number of games and then chop it up into people who are going to be just wanting to play league games because they want their game to count towards their league stats that that's going to lead to people being shut out of games because they don't want to play those those league games they don't they don't care about that. They just want to play a friendly game of TI. There are going to be people who right, are yeah. too hardcore. They're like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I want my game to count. So they're going to be. They're it's going to just end up dividing the community in that way. And on top of yeah. that, I think that with a league, naturally, you're going to start uh, recording people's stats and how well they do, and how well they do on specific races or factions, or how well they do against particular players. And I think that's also going to cause meta issues between players and i think yeah, that yeah. there's there are going to be plenty of times where um people are setting up a game for instance and someone says hey i i'd like to join this game and the other players are going to be like wait we've seen your league stats and you're way too good we don't want to play with a player of your caliber we just want to have a friendly calm game and that player is going to be yeah. forced to not play or they're or the, the opposite will happen where someone's league stats are going to be very poor and people who want to play with quote top tier players are going to say no we'd rather have someone who's better so we have a more competitive game and i think yeah. that's horrible uh, i think that would be terrible yeah. for our small community it is it, it it could be pretty sad especially for yeah like you're saying it's a pretty small community I, I think it also comes down to an organizational problem which is i don't know how you could possibly structure a league um because the tts community is a lot of people who can play once 
I don't know, a month, once every two months, and then you've got a lot of people who play four times, five times a week. Yeah, yeah you have like people all over that pers- that space. And so, and yeah. so, how do you structure? Like, do people get to just play a game whenever they want? Like, sure. The, to, to all these questions, there's some sort of answer, but I think it's too small of a community where like you can't really organize it enough because there's probably a really easy world where people like. I don't know, Dodonko and Zendog have like 15 league games under their belt and everyone else has two. Yeah. And it's just like, what are we, what are we doing here? Like what, how is this league leading to anything that is worthwhile? I think what is probably the better solution to like, if we want to just have games where, uh, like we're trying to run tournaments that are invitational, I don't think you have a league, but I do think if we want to do a tournament that is, you need, you, you need to show you've played this many games on TTS that's fine for one small 36 player tournament, right? Like if, if, if we're going to do it that way, it's like, oh, that's one way. And we, 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 again, it's about shaking it up and, and making the invitation style different. Whereas if we try to collect one big league together, uh, there's no way for it to be consistent. Mm-hmm. There just yeah, isn't yeah. because people fade in and out of the community and fade in and out of being able to play games and having time. And like how many times have we had games where even in trying – this is the biggest takeaway for me. In trying to set up this tournament, it is incredibly, incredibly difficult to get enough players into games. Right. Yeah. And and it, I don't see how a league can work if it's just like volunteer basis because that yeah. well, structurally I, doesn't I, work. I think that and if it's not volunteer basis, if it's you got to play this many games and you got to play on this day, that's never going to work right, because yeah. people have lives and they can't show up to games when you tell yeah. them. I got something. That's, it just I, I, doesn't I, work that I way. I got something completely different than anything that we're yeah. talking about. Um, and it does have to do with the invitationals that we were talking about before. I, th- I, th- I, think, I think everything we're saying about leagues uh, make a lot of sense as far as the problem. I think, I think one of the issues, really, the primary issues has to do with the amount of times you play um, versus, like, you know, so it's just, it would be wildly inconsistent with stuff like that. Yep. Um, yep. With the idea of an invitational, what if, and I have not, <laughs> I have not spoken this idea to either of you, uh, but I'm kind <laughs> of inspired, I'm taking some inspiration from the way that comedy festivals work. Um, yeah. What if, essentially, what you do is you record yourself playing a game. You you yeah. just record your feed of your camera. You don't have to do any commentary. You don't do anything. You just play a game normal. You send in yep. your tape of like this is me playing a game. This is I won this game and here's how it went. Yep. Um, and then depending on how that tape is, that's like your entry point into a right. tournament. Is I, I think that's you having that's a good m- tape. I think that's like one of the methods. The main point being here is the goal, the reason people want a league is they want to pl- that competitive games are fun. Mm-hmm. People caring about the the stakes of the game are important. People don't like hyper casual games because uh, the the people that don't like hyper casual games don't like them because maybe there's a player who just doesn't even care about winning and they throw the victory to someone else and it just doesn't feel right. People want to play where everyone's out to win. But you can do that without the structural disadvantages of a league and that's why again i just advocate let's get more mini tournaments let's just do as many of those as we can let's do community run mini tournaments it doesn't even have to be stuff that like the three of us or whatever like space gets peace it doesn't have to be something we're running but let's just get more little tournaments going because i think that is the better option versus like trying to try to maintain yeah. some big league that constantly goes the leagues that work are leagues that work in big cities with groups that they just they it's 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 a league but it is also part it, of their casual network of players yeah. it's not a huge I, deal i guess i guess what i mean in the 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 thing about the 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 idea of a tape is that yeah that so so the idea of a league is essentially we have a, a season where right. uh, a bunch of people are playing different games and they're trying to do well um, yes. in in the season so that then they can qualify for the tournament, right? That's that's yeah. essentially how a, that's what a point. league would lead to. Um, right. The idea of doing a tape thing is not necessarily... The assumption isn't that you would send in a tape and then we would like watch the whole thing and go like super in-depth, but the tape would be a way to prove, hey, I won this game, and this is how yeah. I won it, and you can right. kind of go through and come, and come through that. So, yeah. so it would kind of create the same situation where if we say... Hey, um, there's a tournament coming up. Get your tapes in by September. Um, yes. Then everybody's playing a lot because the more they play, the more opportunities they have to get a good tape where they went, where they won. Yeah. You know, that's that, that's yeah. essentially what I'm saying. That actually gives me a, a great idea for, for content that uh, will probably never come to fruition, but it would be very <laughs> cool to have those videos and stream uh, commentary on that. 
or like record yes. a video of commentary on that because maybe there's like space to skip stuff around and have a shorter video but like sure just go super deep in depth on how someone plays the game would be Absolutely. fun and interesting that i love obs that. OBS is a free program. Yep, you it can is. download it. You can stream your game. You can record your game. You, you don't even have to stream it. You just record it to your desktop if your if your computer runs okay enough uh, with Tabletop Simulator. Just start recording your games and let's just start working on it this way. Let's just start getting, you know, proof of of play that is with an effort. It's not even like you have to be the best player ever. It's like yeah. that you the the fact that we can see you play and and put forward like a strong amount of effort is enough to like put you into that consideration and, and the fact that you care enough to want to get into a tournament. I think that's sort of it, the goal of a league it, and why we want to And also it's just kind of formula. a light way to make like the regular weekly play that people right. are doing kind and, of competitive and, yeah. in the way that a be, league would be. Right. And to not limit it to people who can only record their own games. Like you can have other people record your game for you. If yep. someone oh, in every totally. game at TTS I, is recording, submits it. If Hunt, if, if Root is just hanging out and he's streaming casual games and someone wins and they're like, Root, can you please submit that tape for me? Yeah. I, of course we're gonna do that. Like, yeah. like uh, that's no. Nope. Like, you don't I, have I to have the computer my casual games. It. Like that's that's the streaming yeah. that I do on my Twitch channel. Is I just feel like streaming the game that I'm playing that day. Exactly. And I just throw it on. Right. Right. Did I just yeah. solve it? I think I solved you it. Solved it. <laughs> I think I, I think it. I just I, solved it. Is I, tapes. <laughs> I mean, I think it's an interesting idea. I still am vehemently one hundred percent against leagues, completely. Of course. And 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 the idea of like a bunch of smaller tournaments. I don't hate, but I also I'm a I I don't love it because I'm such a huge proponent of the game just being uh, friendly games with oh pals. of course and like, I want to play casual games yeah. and I want to do I want to do more we want to do more streams where we just get six players together that we think have interesting dynamics and we yeah. just want to make them play like there's there are numerous different ways to get the content we want to get right and, but and there are, in terms of this competitive like thing that's kind of spat out some cool ideas for. for how little tournaments could work and, and i think that those might be fun but like i don't want i don't think that ti when you really get down to it i don't think it's a good competitive game I, I just think yeah. that well, there that's, are... That's also... Is that, that's also uh, I mean, that does have to be the final takeaway of this whole episode and this whole arc yeah. is, like, it's all for naught, right? I mean, yeah, like it, the idea of tournaments in Twilight Imperium is not quite what the game is developed It's not. Around. Yeah, like, that, it just isn't. And It is fun, and I, I'll never say it's not fun, but it's not where the core mindset of the game I'm going to differ a little bit, because sure. what, what we did in... The end result of what we did was that we had six players and it was it was the best game of twilight imperium i've ever seen like i mean oh I, that's yeah. the po I, I think that's a great point is it's worth it to make to go through this process because you get games that are like nothing else you can ever see right um but so but there's, does, there's does a place i have the the tightness of esports no 100 percent no yeah, yeah definitely, definitely not. not yeah definitely not but i still think that i I still think there is a world where this is the beginning. This is the the yes. first thing of a series of things. Instead here's here's what I want to call it. Here's what I want to call it. It's not leagues. It's not leagues. It's not tournaments. But there is a world for organized play, right? Organized yeah. play is a thing that people want, and and that's what everyone's craving is organized play, more than just these weird casual pickup games where you never know what you're getting. That's a, pe what people want is a clear set of rules that we're all following and we all understand and we're we're going about with the same intents moving forward that's yeah. what people want yeah. it doesn't the the context of is it a league or what's the structure of the tournament that's not the important part the important part is is it an organized setting that i'm playing this in that's mm -hmm. what people want mm -hmm. well that's it wow let's, a... let's get out of here uh i i think um i'm excited about exploring this territory going forward but i think it is exploration i don't think there's any set um thing we have in mind going forward i think we're just gonna so start trying if, stuff. if someone's listening to this episode right now and feeling a little bit like oh like i don't i feel like this like i think there are a lot of people that really enjoyed this tournament and i think yeah I, I what i want them to take away from this is that that we're not done that's all i'm no. trying to get out of this yep. is like exactly. this is this is not done this is not over but also we're not done i would not expect it to be the same next time yep. you see it yep yeah. yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna take all the feedback and things we learned, and we're gonna gonna try it again and do do something different. Right. Uh, and if you want to see us do that, 
you can <laughs> follow us on Twitter at Space Cats Pod. You can follow us on Facebook, uh, Space Cats Peace Turtles. You can rate us, please, if you've enjoyed this tournament, if you've enjoyed this process with us. Uh, rate us on iTunes or Apple Podcasts. Uh, you can also find our posts on the Twilight Imperium subreddit, uh, along with a lot of other really good posts and discussion. You can also uh, you comment can... on the YouTube videos and say something nice, you know? Like, <laughs> I feel like we've kind of... It's kind of like, been a, a, a disproportionate <laughs> amount of criticism versus like people being like, oh, I like this. Or hashtag yeah. nailed it is pretty nice. <laughs> hashtag nailed it. I miss hashtag nailed it. Bring back hashtag nailed it. Uh, you can also become a part of our Patreon. Uh, and this is where you can gain benefits that help contribute to the show and produce different episodes of the show. We've got a Galactic Council episode coming up. Uh, so if you want to get it in on that, the voting is almost closed. I don't know. We always run those. It's not like it's very structured, but at some point that voting is going to close. Uh, so get in on that. Uh, you can also join our Discord uh, and get a bunch of those Patreon benefits. Hey, you can follow uh, our friend here, Alec, at twitch.tv slash root711. Uh, and you can catch him streaming lots of games. How often do you stream these days, Rick? Uh, it's fairly often, it, it feels it's like. It's been like a couple days a week for the past few weeks. Yeah. Um, and I, I will <laughs> say that if anyone is aching for a new fun game to watch, the last video that should be on my, my Twitch uh, page, the game that I played just a couple days ago, is a banger. Definitely, definitely check it out. It was pretty fun. Cool. With a cool. great edit. Uh, and uh, I want to throw some shout outs to some space kitties. I want to thank Kraken. Billy, T.G. Welch, Yin for Life, Patience is a Virtue, Dursta, Naderade, and Jimbov. Yeah. Uh, also, I want to say real quick, I'm a comedian, and you can catch me at Earthquake Hurricane every Thursday, 8 p.m. at Ford Food and Drink. You can also, um, I kind of want to throw this out there. I, I have, I've been kind of light on talking about shows, um, but on May 11th, um, I'm going to be doing the monthly show that I do uh, called Comedy Bender, uh, at the lamp, which is attached to the Aladdin Theater. It's a brunch show. It starts at like noon. Um, what's special about it this time is uh, my normal co host, uh, Jake Silberman, uh, is actually going to be out of town. So I'm having my friend, uh, Stephen Wilbur, who, if you, w- if you were like the one person that watched a stream on the Space Cats Twitch <laughs> like a while back, you'll remember him as the other guy. Um, he's a very, very nerdy comic, somebody that I feel like a lot of uh, Space Cats people could yeah. kind of get behind and be excited about and who knows maybe you'll see him uh on the show in, in the, the future. future i'll put that out as a little teaser yep. um he might have a role to play here even though he has no- knows nothing about twilight imperium hm. what could For i sure. mean by that who knows what who could knows? that mean uh, also oh and... wait i also want to put this out there you can follow me uh on instagram at hungry <laughs> hunty uh-huh. um i'm trying to get better about that uh, okay. I take pictures of plates of food after I've eaten them. <laughs> so check that out. It's fun. Uh, and also, I want to try to get better at Twitter. So my Twitter handle is Hun Bunsen, if you want to follow me. H-U-N-B-U-N-S-O-N. Yeah. And uh, so that's it. This is the end of, of like, an era. And uh, I oh, think we're on is, the road. Oh, man, I we're, feel weird. Like, I, like, don't even want to get out of this episode because I feel a little I bit like, you know, when you were a kid and, like, your friend would come visit you that you didn't feel like get to see <laughs> yeah, I, that often yeah. and then like they leave like this feels yeah. weird i'd like to yeah. to say thanks for having me on the show several times and letting me help you of guys course. out with the uh, tournament it's been a huge blast to be oh well i want to counter that real quick with a thank you for the ridiculous amount of work yeah. that you came that you in voluntarily volunteered and yourself <laughs> to do for this project and for yeah. this show right like, it should be it should be noted like you you just came to us and you were like you guys are doing the tournament I've been streaming a little bit. I really want to do all of it. I want to do all. Of the, I want to do the whole tournament. And right. it was like, I, oh, <laughs> all right, yeah, you can do that because I definitely don't want to do that. And yeah, if, and if we didn't even know ever... how we were gonna do it. We were like, well, yeah. I don't. I mean, I think without you, it, uh, it would have been. Oh, <laughs> been. Oh my god, I don't know what it would have been like. It would have yeah. been very rough. So yeah, I'm I'm excited. We're officially on the road to Gen Con. I think this is this is all you know normal speed cat stuff. But we're gonna space cat. What did I just say? Space <laughs> cat. Space cats. Space cats. Space cats. Uh, we're, we are on the road to Gen Con. Root's gonna be with us at Gen Con, uh, and and I can't wait. And I know here in a few weeks, uh, that so the the event signups for Gen Con are coming up uh, in mid May. 
Uh, so we're definitely going to have uh, old Knob Daddy. Blark Nab's going to be on the show Blark Nab. before uh, May 19th. That's the day. So we're, we're going to start gearing up for that. But before ni- May 19th, we're going to have another interview with Blark Nob to talk about the Gen Con tournament and what's going to be going on there. And we're going to start building hype for that. Uh, I do know I want to already throw this out there because I think there's been a number of questions. This year at Gen Con, there's definitely going to be a bunch of casual games as well as the tournament games uh, because what's always happened at Gen Con in the, the past is... People just want to play TI, and so they jump on the only TI game that's being hosted there, which is the tournament. And it's not always the right space for them. And so uh, I know Blark Nob and his team are hoping that splitting them up means we get even better competitive play. So I want to encourage you, if you're going to be at Gen Con, consider either option. If you think of yourself as someone who really wants to get on the tournament, don't at all think you don't have a place to be in that tournament. You should, you should just sign up for it. But if you're just hoping to play some nice, fun, casual games definitely get in on those other ones and i know that we want to play at least one game while we're at gen con I'm, we have, I'm we, have to to it we have to we have we, to we didn't get to do it last year and we have to play at least one game so we, we will definitely be seeking one game at gen con but there's going to be so much more of that talk later uh for now hold up one thing uh, real quick uh let's, space yeah. space kitties any space kitties that are gonna be uh at gen good, con I, Hit I'm gonna us extend up. that to Goodyear, Bro- yeah, Goodyear yeah. Brotherhood as well. Goodyear Brotherhood and Space Kitties, we definitely oh, want to well, do some sort for, of game for different for different reasons. I would have thrown oh, that out. Oh, there. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, Space Kitties. Uh, if there are any Space Kitties that are going to be at Gen Con and would like to do an episode while we are all literally in the same spot, uh, we have already had somebody ever. reach out about that. Um, yeah. And I, I, I feel like. Last Gen Con, we were frankly overwhelmed, and we oh, man, put yes. way too much work on ourselves to do, and it made no sense basically <laughs> at all. Yeah. But this time, uh, we kind of know what we want going into it, uh, and yeah. I think it's going to be a lot smoother of a thing, meaning that me and Matt and Root and the whole team in general will, will be a lot more available to do things with you guys. So, so, yes. I, and it's not even about, I, I mentioned the space kitties just because they are co-producers of the show and yeah. can get in their episodes in a really interesting way while we're all in the same place. But also right. just really anybody that is into the show, if you're going yeah. to Gen Con, there's no reason not to let us know. Yeah. We, we did this last year and it didn't, it didn't go super great, but I really want to, um, on our discord, I want to start flagging people who are definitely going to Gen Con so that we can do meetups and stuff like that through the discord. So please, Please hit us up on the Discord if you are going to be at Gen Con, and we'll add a little kind of role. It's not going to be like highlighted on your whole thing, but we'll we'll be able to track everybody down later on when we when we're there at Gen Con, and we can do meetups and stuff. I definitely want to do that, and we'll have to start putting that work in now as we as people are getting their tickets and everything. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's it. I think that's it. I think that might be it. That's I a good we one. Just did it. I think we. Uh, that was a good one. <laughs> I think we nailed it. I think we did nail it. I think uh, I think we're nailing it now. You know what I mean? Like it's just kind of like trails off, kind of just kind of ending, just kind of limp ending at the end, where we're just kind of like, oh, I guess we're not recording anymore. Thank you for listening to Space Cats Peace Turtles, and thanks to Ben Prunty for the use of his music. You can find more at benpruntymusic.com and benprunty.bandcamp.com. Pax Magnifica, Bellum Gloriosum.